Look, as much as I am a fan of homeschooling, obviously, I was homeschooled myself for some years and I homeschool my eight children and have been for 12 years and counting. So you might think that I am automatically a proponent of homeschooling for everybody. However, there are actually reasons why I would say don't homeschool, it's not right for you. And that is what we are gonna talk about today. Before we jump in, if you are interested in homeschooling content, be sure to subscribe. This is my brand new homeschooling channel. I've been talking about homeschooling on YouTube for like 10 years, but this is my brand new all homeschool all the time channel. So be sure to subscribe Subscribe, leave me a comment down below and let me know what kind of homeschooling content you'd like to see. And let's talk about the reasons why I don't think that you should homeschool. Number one, you're expecting it to fix everything. If your child is having problems in school, if your child is having issues or there's other things going on and you think that homeschool is going to be the band-aid that will just across the board fix everything, you're going to be wildly disappointed. It really is almost like an extension of the regular parenting that you're doing on a daily basis. And we all know from parenting and raising kids that there are issues that are happening uh, daily sometimes with our children. Maybe there are some like tensions in relationships, different personalities, things like that. None of that is going away just because you are homeschooling. The idea that homeschooling is going to fix every problem, there are some problems that it will fix. There are some things that it will help with, but there are also other areas that like a little flashlight, it's going to shine a light on something, especially if it was a pre-existing issue or problem that maybe you haven't dealt with well or hasn't been dealt with fully yet, it's still going to be there and it might even creep up a little bit more until you fully address it and fix it. I'm a firm believer that homeschooling can take a lot of the issues, external pressures, other things that are happening outside your house. It can remove those things. It just doesn't automatically make everything better. Number two is that you don't have a solid reason why. I talk a lot about this in my homeschooling courses and it's really one of the most important things that you must must have for your homeschool and that is a vision or mission statement which is really a why statement something that you can come back to when things are hard when you have to make decisions it really is like this filter that you will put everything through like does this curriculum help me get closer to my why? Does this out of the home activity help us get closer to our why? Really having a solid vision for your homeschool is so vital. Not only do you need that to help you make decisions, but you also need it to get you through when the days are hard, because guess what? The days are going to be hard. There's going to be times that you're like, why did I choose this? You watch the yellow school bus go by and you just dream to yourself about running out there and flagging it down and throwing all your kids on there and seeing them, bye bye, see you later. You will absolutely have those moments. And so you need a solid why that you can come back to, to remind yourself why when it's hard, you're choosing this. Why when the days feel like they could be so much easier, life could be so much easier, this would be better. You will always sort of fantasize about like grass is greener on the other side kind of a thing. But if you have a solid why and a solid vision statement, then you're always gonna have that to come back to, to reflect, to make sure that your decisions are aligning with that and to remind yourself why you're going through some of the harder times that you're going through. Now, if you don't have one of those for your homeschool, do not worry. I will help you do that. I actually have a free workbook for you. It's down below in the description box and it will walk you through exactly how to craft a vision statement that is unique to your family, that addresses your specific desires and the goals that you have. It's totally you know, unique for you and I will walk you through that each step. So check down below in the description box and you can grab that vision statement workbook and get that done. If you don't have it, you need it. Number three is a willing heart, a willing spirit, because guess what? Like I've said a million times, homeschooling is not always the easiest thing. Just plain and simple, it takes effort and it takes work. And at times it may feel like way more than you thought that it was going to be. Um, at other times you may be able to make choices that make that a little bit easier. It does take time and effort, you know? You have to put in the effort in understanding your children, how they learn, um, in choosing the right curriculums, the right methods, the sort of setup, the execution. Now, I'm a big proponent of simplifying things. It's a huge part of 
what I teach and share here is how to create a homeschool that is sustainable through simplicity. I do think at times we can overcomplicate things quite a bit. It doesn't have to be as hard as we make it, but there is still a non-negligible amount of effort um, and work that you're going to have to put into this thing. Now, of course, that's not all doom and gloom. There are so many resources and options out there, community groups, Facebook groups, you know, online forums, YouTube channels of other homeschooling moms. Um, There's so many places that you can get inspiration, encouragement, support. So it's not like you have to go with this alone or figure it out on your own or anything like that. But you have to have that willing heart, that willing spirit that says, yes, I want to do this. Yes, I'm willing to put in the effort. I believe that the fruits are worth it. I believe that these seeds that you're sowing, uh, you're going to reap some really beautiful rewards from those but it does take time and you do have to put in that effort. Number four is flexibility. Now, I'm not talking about doing the splits, though that could be beneficial, I suppose, in some ways. It's still one of those things that I would like to be able to do, never been able to do it, oh well. Uh, But flexibility in your schedule, your life, what you have going on, you have to be kind of nimble and willing to be flexible. If you are the kind of person that finds that you are very rigid, Um, You require a like very tight schedule and everything to be, you know, I hate to say like type A, but these are terms that we know and understand. If you find yourself to be a little uh, high strung, then it's going to be a challenge. Now, I still think that people with that personality type can succeed at homeschooling because it often helps to make them, like force them to be more flexible, but you are gonna have a period of like headbutting if you aren't flexible by nature. You can still get there, but it's gonna take some work, like a 40 year old trying to learn to do the splits, okay? It's gonna take some work. That would take a lot of work. And I, for one, while I'm not a super uh, rigid type person, I am a productive person. I'm somebody who likes to get things done. And let me tell you, sometimes trying to homeschool a bunch of children, they will sabotage your to-do list. They will sabotage all the things that you thought you were gonna get done today. And it's gonna be so great. And I'm gonna feel so amazing. And this is just gonna be, ah, you know, angels singing, clouds opening, all of that. No, sometimes it feels like the cards are stacked against you and everything is just going wrong in that day. And you have to be able to be flexible to say, okay, what's the minimum amount of things that I need to get done today in order for everyone to like make it to bedtime and go to sleep and try again tomorrow. Some days just get off the rails and we have to be able to be flexible to deal with those and create flexible homeschooling schedules and routines that allow us to deal with those without throwing everything off. Number five, you aren't willing to relearn lots of things. You don't have a learner's heart, a learner's spirit. That will make it harder. Um, And it's something that I will tell you, I did not have for the first number of years that I was homeschooling. It took me, um, I mean, it took me like five plus years, I would say, of homeschooling before I really got my own like fire for learning back. Once I let go of the like rigid schedules and trying to replicate public school at home, once I was able to let go of that and truly see how my children learn, be inspired by their curiosity, I started letting myself be open to the idea of like being curious and wanting to learn alongside them. And that changed everything for me. So having a learner's heart and a learner's spirit, because guess what? You are gonna have to relearn stuff. You're gonna have to relearn uh, math. You're gonna have to relearn fractions and long division. If you once learned it and forgot it or never really learned it, but got passed anyways. Yeah, there's a lot of those people, okay? It's one of the main reasons I hear from people that they can't homeschool is because they don't remember how to do stuff they learned in elementary school. So you have to be willing to relearn some things at times in order to help teach them to your children. The best part is that um, you've already learned them once likely, so they will be easier. And as an adult, they will be much easier to pick up. And oh, uh, of course, that makes sense. And I, for one, have had so much fun relearning certain subjects. And I found myself at one point doing math worksheets for fun, fractions, multiplying fractions for fun, because I was so bad at it, just like math was so hard. And I felt like such a failure with it. And once as an adult, I relearned it in order to help my children. It all just like clicked for me. And I was like, this is fun. It's sick, I know, but that's how I felt. And so 
sometimes for fun, I do math problems. It's a wild world, I'm telling you. But having that learner's heart, learner spirit has been so beneficial to me. And I'll tell you the other secret about that is that if you ever had a teacher in high school or middle school, especially, I would say, who was really passionate about what they were teaching, it was a topic that maybe everyone thought was boring, chemistry or math. But the teacher was so like just giddy excited to teach this and acted like everything was so exciting and like, oh my gosh, you're not going to believe this. Let me show you this. Their excitement and love for the topic is infectious. And that is something that we can take into our homeschools with our kids and bring back the excitement of learning, the excitement of figuring things out that you didn't know before. We can bring that spirit of joy and excitement about learning. We can bring that into our homeschools and allow it to be something that we impart upon our children that gets like rubbed off on them just by nature of having a mom who is interested and excited. Number six is that you aren't willing to allow your home to be messy at times. Um, that is one of the things about being a homeschooling parent. I say this all the time. It complicates things as far as meal planning and home, like homemaking routines and keeping our house clean and tidy and things like that because we are a family of 10. And so there are 10 people that are living in our house all day, every day. We eat every meal in our house, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And you don't realize sometimes how, you know, if your kids are gone at school all day and then they come home and then it's like homework and dinner and off to bed and then on the weekends it's sports, you're not like all in your house all the time. In fact, it's a small portion that everyone is in the house. Well, when you're homeschooling, you're in the house 90% of the time. You might be going to co-ops and sports and other activities and stuff, but you are really living in your home all day, every day. And it can be hard on your home. It's uh, something that is going to require you to be okay with some messes. You may need to allow a toddler to play in some stuff in an area and be a little bit messy and just have some fun so that that you can focus on school with a slightly older child. You've got to learn to be okay with your house not being perfectly clean all the time, uh, living in your home, learning in your home, making your home an environment that your children feel as though they can learn in and be curious and have access to resources and things like that. It may require that your house doesn't look like an Instagram worthy or Pinterest worthy home all the time. Most people's don't anyways. We all know that that's all pretty much just a lie, but we still take it to heart and we still think that it's possible. It's not, don't buy the lie. Your house is gonna be messy sometimes and it's okay. Another reason is if you just hate office supplies and never want to have them in your home again. I'm sort of teasing, but you will have a rekindled romance with office supplies, with printers and papers and laminators, should you choose. Um, things like that, I mean, listen, I love me some good notebooks and pens and pencils, but you will figure out which ones are pertinent and which ones are not. Again, there's so much um, homeschooling inspo, inspiration to be found out there, but don't fall into the trap that you must have all of those things and that you must have this just like amazing craft room, homeschool room where there's paintings everywhere and kids have access to art supplies 100% of the time. And, you know, everyone's just being like these creative little Leonardo da Vinci's people are building engineering projects and, you know, I don't know, doing sculptures or something like that. maybe for some people it is like that. Uh, but for most of us, it won't be. And I, for one, am one of those moms who does not love having uh, craft messes and art stuff everywhere all the time. I like it to be brought out, used, and put away because that's just how I am, okay? And I have had to learn to be more flexible with that stuff. I have found areas in which here's the things that I'm willing to let my kids have access to all the time. They get put in a cabinet where the kids can reach them and then everything else gets put up and it needs permission for mom, i.e. things like kinetic sand, stuff that I know is going to curl my toes if it's all over the floor and makes a huge mess, but markers, crayons, uh, colored pencils, paper, all of that kind of stuff is like, have at it, kids, uh, because you really do want to encourage the creativity in your kids. So you're going to rekindle your romance with office supplies, craft supplies, art supplies. If you ever lost it, it will come back. My mom used to tell me that your children are a mirror and that basically a lot of the things that you do, you will see your kids do, good or bad. While we all know that they, you know, watch us clean and they don't clean, right? We know that, but 
We also know that they can reflect some of our worst personality traits, some of our short temperedness, some of our, um, you know, quick to anger, all of that kind of stuff, some of snarkiness, snappiness, any of that kind of stuff kids seem to pick up on right away and return to us. Sometimes it's hard to see ourselves in that way, to see ourselves reflected back to us through our children. So having a willingness to understand that, that homeschooling is going to, in some ways actually cause you to reflect a lot on who you are, what you believe, how you treat people, the way that you act, the way that you speak, all of these things are going to come back kind of in your face, I think in a good way. I think initially it hurts, the sting, right? You know, we all have like, maybe you have one kid that you're like, this kid grates on my nerves. And then you come to find out that that kid grates on your nerves because that kid is you. That kid behaves exactly like you. And so you realize like, oh, okay, hmm, it's interesting how that works, right? But I think it's good. Initially, we're like, ah, it kind of bothers us. We're like, I don't, I don't like this, don't like it at all, don't wanna to have to face my own issues and things. But in the end, it is good. It forces us to, again, take a look at ourselves, who we are as people, how we are behaving, how we are treating people. Of course, it would be easier to just bury your head in the sand and pretend like you don't notice, don't see it, but homeschooling doesn't really allow you to do that. It's just by the nature of how much time you spend together and um, how much you are imparting upon them, teaching them, and you're going to see a lot of yourself and hopefully you'll like what you see. And if not, hopefully you can take some steps to change it so that you do like what you see. You will also realize that the you know, emotional uh, weight that we always talk about moms carrying the emotional burden of like being everything to everybody all the time, carrying all of the weight of, you know, the worries about things and the pressures and stuff. And it's only going to get exacerbated by the fact that you're homeschooling because now you're also going to be feeling as though your children's future, their education is just 100% on your shoulders. And there's a lot of pressure with that in the beginning. If you're not scared away yet, then what I would tell you is that you will learn how to manage that pressure. You will also learn to be excited by some of the things that that pressure means, some of the doors that it opens, some of the ways that you realize, oh yeah, I get to help my children learn about the things that really matter, the things that I find actually really matter in life and being an adult and getting through this world. Like we're not beholden completely to, you know, this sort of seemingly arbitrary at times curriculum and style of learning and that is sort of forced upon public school teachers um, and not getting a lot of say and choice in what they're teaching, how they're teaching it you're gonna get a lot more freedom over those things. And it's actually very empowering and encouraging. It's one of those things that can feel very heavy, but once you realize that it's actually a gift and that it actually opens up the world to you and to your children, then you don't see it as a burden anymore. So it's one of those things that takes time to shift in your mind. If you can learn to take pressure off of yourself in so many different areas of your life and realize that you are doing the best you can, you're not going to be the perfect wife, mother, sister, friend, nurse, teacher, chef, taxi driver, like all of the things, you're never gonna be able to do everything perfectly all the time and that you're doing the best that you can and you're simplifying as much as possible not putting a bunch of undue expectations on yourself. It of course can be very exhausting, but it is something that can become more bearable if we are far more realistic with our expectations, which sort of goes nicely into the next point that if you are a perfectionist, if you are a control freak, if you are a person who feels like everything has to be done my way or the highway all the time, you are going to be forced to let go of that if you intend to homeschool. Um, if you're somebody who doesn't think they could ever let go of that, then this just might not be for you because man, does this whole experience uh, rip every sense of like complete control that you ever thought you had. It was false anyways, by the way, but it takes it away from you completely. Uh, now, you know, I've heard very wise people, much wiser than myself say that, you know, really when we say like, oh, I'm a perfectionist, it's really, it's a fear of rejection. Um, it's not actually about things having to be perfect. It's about the fear of what happens if they're not. And so you can see how that would very easily map onto being a homeschooling mom um, and how that could make homeschooling very difficult and something very difficult to manage and deal with if you can't let go of that. Keeping up that facade, that's what it is. Keeping up that facade of perfection and uh, you know everything just going great all the time is 
absolutely impossible when you live and school and everything inside the four walls of your home with tiny people, that's gone. Also, don't bother homeschooling if you're somebody who feels like, I know everything, I have nothing left to learn, like I know all the things, this will be so easy. I'm here to tell you, there's gonna be things that come up in your children's curriculums, and I'm talking from like kindergarten, that you're gonna be like, why do I not know this? Why do I not remember this? It's going to hold up a mirror to the fact that a lot of the stuff that we learn in early elementary school, the younger years, it doesn't stick. It sticks long enough to pass a test and then it goes away. Um, it's not durable learning and it doesn't stick. So when we have to revisit it again, 10 years later, 20 years later, 30 years later, it's not there anymore, right? That's a topic for another day. We won't go down that rabbit hole, but I would just advise if you are someone who's like overly cocky, this is going to uh, rock your world a little bit and probably in a good way because again, it forces us to confront some of the ideas that we have about how we learn, what matters, what your kids really need to know, when do they need to know it, and then going beyond high school and into college and you know further learning and deeper learning about topics. It's gonna open up a whole world of the brain, how the brain works, learning, education. Some of us find incredibly fascinating and hopefully you will too. Some of us, myself included, did not find incredibly fascinating when I started. I got there out of necessity. And then once I started learning, I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. And now it's something that I am constantly like researching and learning about and wanting to know more about because I feel it helps me help my children. But that is a journey you have to get to and you have to be willing to get to. If you're still here, if you're still watching, then I would argue that you're probably feeling like you can overcome these hurdles. And this video is not in any way meant to discourage someone from homeschooling, but it is meant to encourage you to know thyself. I say this all the time because it's truly one of the most important things that we can pass decisions through, like the most important filter we can pass decisions through is to know thyself. Know who you are, what really matters to you, what's important to you, what you're willing to do, what you're not willing to do, your values. Knowing yourself really well will help you make the best decisions. And again, the most important things to me boil down to two simple things is having a willing heart and a willing spirit to do this, to tackle this, to face the challenges that will surely come and having a good solid vision, a why, reasons why you are doing this that matter to you, um, that really like strike at the heart of why you are doing this so that you can always have that to come back to when you hit those rocky waters because you will. Don't forget to check down below in the description box to get the free workbook for creating your vision and mission and your why for homeschooling. It's so important.